have to say, guys, is woo! We made it, okay? We crap and made it. We did it. Since 2008, it's been a long time coming. A very long time. LONG TIME! And it's finally here, okay? Just clinched our playoff berth. I, I can't even, like, the emotions that are going through... I cannot. I'm about to explode. That's all I have to say. Listen, man, how grateful are we? It's great, one of the great, great, I hope everybody's having a Merry Christmas. I know I am. Great Christmas gift to have. This is one of my favorite. Ugh. I can't even, oh my god. Be oh. Oh. Okay. I'm so happy, man. I, I cannot, man, I almost was, I was almost in tears. I'm serious, I almost cried. I was going to cry if we lost this Buffalo Bills game, which we're about to talk about right now. But let me say something before we do. First of all, if Adam Gase doesn't win Coach of the Year, we're gonna shoot Roger Goodell. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to Roger Goodell's office and we're gonna kill him. All right. If he doesn't win Coach of the Year, okay, for what he has done for my our franchise as Dolphins fans to take us out of the situation that we were in an ultimate crapping purgatory, okay, and his first year as our coach, we win ten games after starting one and four in a in, a, in an injury devastated roster, an injury. De I'm talking. One of our best players, our top three, one of our top three best players. Then we lose our crapping quarterback, who was balling out, by the way, before he got hurt. Let's not forget that, because he was, he was balling out. His completion percentage, his completion percentage, his quarterback rating through the crapping roof, okay? He was balling out, alright? Statistically, one of the best deep throwers in the league. I'm one of the clutchest quarterbacks in the NFL at the time. Okay, so he was balling out, he goes down, and we still, we crap and beat the Jets away, okay, which is always a shaky game, because it's the Jets, and then we go up to Buffalo, and then, oh, snap, we go up to Buffalo, and we just, oh, oh, we're about to get into it, okay, we're about to get into it, now, the, like, oh, God, guys, I can't even, seriously, I just can't even think right now. Now, it's really late, so I might forget some things because it's been a long time because I obviously just got done Chris doing Christmas with the uh, fam and everything else like that, like everybody else has uh, in the, you know, the universe. Uh, so, it's been a long day. So, if I forget some things, I apologize. And, I, and if I get some things out of order, don't get all crapping up in arms about it, all right? So, uh, the first thing I really want to talk about is the offense because I think that's probably the most appropriate thing to do uh, because probably obviously the strongest performance of the positional groups was the offense and it's the most fun to talk about usually we talk about the offense second but we're gonna talk about it first here so oh god dude oh, let me calm down I'm about to tear up Woo! Uh, so um, so the offense, uh, the the run game was gr um, first of all, JJ, I, I would kiss you on the forehead if I if, if I could, I, I really would, because you Jay had one of the clutchest performances in Miami Dolphins regular season history. He's probably one of the biggest snubs in NFL history, not to not to be a first uh, Pro Bowl selection. I know the AFC is stacked with running backs, but only was it three or four four players in NFL history have had three or four 200 yard performances in the same year. Okay, that's that's that is ridiculous, man. How does this man not get into the Pro Bowl? Okay, he can't. First of all, Adam Adam Gase has done a great job of sticking to what what, what works and not going away from it. Uh, it's called consistency, which is what he brings, uh, and amazingness. Okay, JJ, I love you so much, Matt Moore. So let's let's start with the first half, Matt Moore. Real shaky in that first half. Starting to get a little worried. Pause. Okay. 57 yards. That's a little crap. In, he was thrown behind some players. He really wasn't. He wasn't. He didn't look good at all. He only had 57 yards. And, I, and I'm not saying that's all Matt's fault because it's not. Because apparently the wind had a huge effect on the passing game and the play calling. Uh, Matt it said he, uh, Matt and Adam said that it affected the deep ball a lot and they really shortened the field a little bit, which sucks because. I mean, I guess that's just Buffalo, but uh, it sucks that, you know, we couldn't, you know, uh, use Matt to his strengths, basically. So that's not all Matt's fault. But the run game, we set the tone early. What did we talk about last, uh, the previewing this video? Setting the tone early. I am pretty sure, could be wrong, I don't know if it was a three and out, but we did make them punt. They got ball first. Uh, good defensive stand. We really were messing with them early, but we'll get to the defense. It's a whole nother other thing. But we set the tone early. I think it was our first or second drive. Jay... 
Oh, Jay with a stiff arm right to the crapping face mask of a Buffalo Bills player. Gets right into the end zone with the speed to stay on the... First of all, Jay's balance has been in question all year. He, coming out of his brain, strep cunts and everything else like that. We all know it. We've talked about it. Uh, it's, you know, it's a fair criticism, but hey, he runs hard. What are you going to do? Uh, to stay on his feet and then go into the end zone. Beautiful play. And by the way, Matt Moore tripped. He almost tripped. Uh, uh, and the, the whole... It almost was a busted play. Almost was terrible. Jay Jay is just... Whew. Oh man, just an absolute beast. And then, and then obviously the run game was working all game. The pass game was real shaky uh, in that first half. But then Kenyon Drake pulls out the Barry Sanders move, man. Uh, he starts one way, pulls it, just cuts it all the way back across the field, runs it up the sideline, beats Jerry Hughes to the sideline, uh, and then he's gone. Matt Moore throws a pretty nice little block there too, by the way. So. Uh, you know, and then Kenny, oh my god, one of those beautiful touchdowns I've seen all year, Kenny Drake's a beast. I'm telling you, man, he, he has a special size-speed combination, and dude, Kenyon's tall, not a lot of people know that, but Kenyon's like 6'2", I'm pretty sure, uh, and he's tall, and he's got, and he's one of the fastest players in the NFL, he's extremely fast, so, uh, he can put that, he put that little, put that little brakes on you. Oh, not the brakes, but the speed on you. Uh, so yeah, the first half, real shaky. Uh, and, uh, I was starting to kind of get worried a little bit, and, the, and then, obviously, I think Andrew missed, oh, oh, my god, Andrew, uh, Andrew missed the, uh, fuel goal, so did they, so, give and take, uh, so I'm not gonna say, oh, oh whatever, uh, but, uh, yeah, so the Buffalo win comes in some, some serious, comes in clutch for the, the Bills and us at points in this game, uh, so, they had, by the way, they had no trouble throwing it deep, but we're gonna get into that in here in a second. Uh, so the second half, the offense just explodes, and they had to, because what, what happened in the second half was complete and other, I was starting to, I was about to cry, I was about to have heart, but dude, I was about to, oh man, I was about to not ever do a video again, it was, it was, it was an extremely, extremely emotional time, uh, for what transpired into that second half, but, um, the offense absolutely explodes in the second half. So I think at halftime it was 14 to seven. Uh, it should have been more, and it wasn't. Matt Moore threw a very costly interception at the end of half. I do not know what he was doing throwing into double coverage. That was just a bad decision by Matt. Uh, and yeah, that was terrible. That was I was so upset with Matt when he did that. Uh, I was throwing things. I was you know I was the typical hardcore Dolphins fan. Uh, and in the second half, uh, the offense just explodes. It just crap and explodes. It's like, okay, it just crap and explodes. Uh, J okay, so I, I'm going to say the first touchdown, we, we did score on our first possession of the second half. Uh, I want to say, and kudos to us for having a great first quarter, because obviously we're, we were one of the worst first quarter teams. Slow, so slow starts. But, <clears throat> But anyway, let's, let's get back to the uh, second half. So we scored our first possession. Uh, and I, I want to say... Ooh, man, I don't remember which one it was. I'm so discombobulated right now. I, I want to say it was the... Uh, I want to say it was the Devontae Parker one. I could be wrong about that. But Damian Williams, uh, I don't know if he said no, it was Devontae Parker. So I'm going to say it was Damian Williams. I'm going to say it's Damian. Uh, not Damian Williams scores, but this is Damian Williams' play. Damian Williams with a beautiful play, and he's been the Swiss Army knife of this offense all year, making big plays against the Chargers. Big plays everywhere. I could just name so many plays, but we're not. We don't have enough time. Uh, so, the, so Damian Williams. But, oh my God! Beautiful play. Cuts it all the way back up the field. And I hate when he does it because he tends to want to do too much sometimes, and it costs us some, sometimes. But this in this particular play it didn't. You can hear the collision. He just bounces right off. He's like a crapping. He's like Pac Man. And he and then he goes. All the way up to the right, cuts it up field. Almost scores. He just didn't have enough juice to take it to the house. Uh, and then th that sets up. A uh, beautiful pass to Kenny Stills. Great timing by Matt. And I definitely think this was not the crap in. I think this was later on in the game. I'm like 100% sure now. But beautiful throw to, for Matt to Kenny. Uh, great timing. Uh, there was also, he had a beautiful throw to Kenny. I don't know if it was the second half or earlier in the first half. Uh, to pick up a huge first, in, first down on third and ten. But um, and then to Devontae Parker. Now, we've been waiting. I've been waiting for like... I'm not going to say, because Devontae's already had signature plays. That's, there's no, but I've been waiting for him to have, like, a big run-after-the-catch touchdown. Because in college, he was one of the best run-after-the-catch receivers I think I've ever seen. Uh, he was a great runner, uh, route runner in college, too. But he has a tremendous speed for his size. Uh, and obviously, you know he can jump out of the gym. So when he got saved, I know the Bills aren't the greatest tackling football team in the world, but this is still an amazing play, regardless. All six foot three of him 
sandwiched between, uh, and then breaks the tackle, brings it all the way to the end zone. Beautiful play by uh, DP. Beautiful throw by Matt, because he was staring down to his left, comes back, sees DP, throws him in stride. Beautiful pass. Oh, no, just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful play. Sexy play. Uh, beautiful play. And, and then, and then uh, so, that was basically for the offense. Oh, that's not all for the offense. Obviously, we gotta keep going. So, let's bring it back to J.J. At this point, J.J. is still beasting and feasting on this offense. Uh, and then, okay, so, it's hard not to crap and talk about the defense. So, we give up a ton of points. We'll get to the defense here in a second. So, it comes down to this. We get about, I think, a minute left on the clock. We're down by three. We gotta send it. Hopefully, we can at least get a field goal. And we know Andrew's been struggling all year. Uh, especially with velocity on his kicks. Uh, and then we get the ball, and I'm praying at this point, man. I'm on my knees. I'm I'm crapping doing Native American uh, crapping survival stuff over here. I'm trying everything I can, uh, and just trying to you know not to get emotional at this point. Matt Moore uh, barely gets us into field goal range with a couple passes. Damian Williams almost almost messes up. Which he did actually no, he didn't almost mess up. He did mess up, uh, and then cost us a lot of seconds. And uh, <coughs> a ton of seconds actually, but in, in in hindsight though, if he didn't fight for extra yards, I don't know if Andrew Franks makes that crap and field goal. I don't know. So I'm I don't know. I'm not gonna say it was all terrible, but in in you know hindsight, it was good play. But te like if we're coaching somebody, we're not gonna tell him to do that. That's just stupid. But anyway, uh, then it, then we're rushing on Andrew Franks, and at this point, I'm like, oh god, I'm getting emotional. Is this the end of the crap and season? It's all for cry. Uh, I'm getting, you know, I'm about to cry. And because 55 yards for Andrew Franks is like 100 yards for, you know, Jared Goff to throw 100 yards. I don't know, like 100 yards down the field or Ter Terrell Pryor. You, you know what I mean? It's really like, I was really nervous, especially with the win. 55 crapping yards, man. 50 yards, 55 yards. Kicks it, and this is like the lowest kick. It's like he just hit a baseball, and it's just going straight. And I'm like, what? And then this thing, this thing, great, like a crapping rainbow, guys. Like a beautiful, like a beautiful rainbow. It just, it skies, and it's like, oh, it's going dipped, and it dips down right into the crapping uprights, man. Uh, and I, seriously, my reaction, I wish I did, I need to record my live reactions to this game, because I, I swear to God, I just said, are you serious? Like, I just, I, I yelled that. I said, are you serious? No, I said, no. I said, are you kidding me that's what i said i said are you kidding me Be uh, and then the overtime overtime is a whole nother discussion man get back and forth we get the ball at one point we stall out to all we had to do is kick a crop and field goal and win the game we stall out uh <clears throat> i'm getting i'm gonna start coughing here in a second uh and then uh we stall out uh and, and then at that point you're like well we could have won it uh, and then Jay Ajayi with the, the best run he's had all year. The man looked like he had nothing left in the tank. Okay? It looked like he was a fan out there. He knows what it means to this franchise. He knows what it means to the fans. He knows what it means, man. And he, on that run, Kyle Williams tries to get him down with an arm tackle. He just crap and smacks that arm away. Runs it up the sideline. Almost scores. Jay was good. Thank, you know, Jay's crap and tired at this point. He probably would have if he wasn't. Uh, Devontae Parker almost th almost throws a touchdown uh, block. A uh, great pursuit by the Bills to bring him down. Uh, and then a couple more runs by Jay puts us into well within field goal range, and Andrew Franks kicks us to the playoffs. Uh, and you know what I mean, man. It it was such it was such a like for, well I at that point I didn't know that we were at in in, but it, it was just like. Wow, man, because this is usually the kind of games that we lose. Uh, and this was so important to the franchise and the fans, like I just said. So, all that was positive, and I love it. It's all positive, but let's get to the defense. And I, I, save, I know I hate to save the worst for last. I should have started with the worst first. But uh, let's go to the worst. This defense almost cost us a crapping playoff berth. The, the Bills did not. The Bills were not stopped in that second half. They scored on every crap in possession they had, man. We, they were just crap. Oh my God! It was so. It was like watching. It, it, oh, oh man! Our linebackers. Oh my God! Our defense is an historically bad, and this is really weird to say this because Vance has done a really good job. Uh, and, and statistically, if you look at the stats, you they would tell you differently. But uh, D he has, he, he really has done a great job. And he did a good job calling this game. It was just the execution that was so poor. It's not even funny. 
but there were plays to be made in this defense. Cam Wake had a, a, a pretty big sack. Sue had it. Oh, my God, Sue. We'll talk about that Sue play here in a second. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But um, back what I was getting at earlier, or was alluding to earlier, we are historically bad Dolphins defense, and statistically, we're crap, it's just, whew, man, we're terrible, I think we look, get, dude, we almost gave up 600 yards to the Bills, uh, and that's, that's not, that's sad, okay, we need to go cry in a corner, I think Tyrod Taylor has his first 300 yard pass game, I mean, we really need to go crap and check ourselves, and make sure we're okay, because the defense played awful in that second half, oh my god, you know what, and I don't want to complain too much because they did make plays to win us the game at the, in overtime. But it was it's been a problem all year, and we've talked about it. We tried to put a we tried to put a safety in the box to help us with the run, but Carter Rambo was he, Michael Thomas had the best play in terms of safety being in the box. I don't even know if I can't remember if he was in the box, but it was a tackle for a loss. I'm not sure. But Carter Rambo is not Rashard Jones, and I know, dude, we miss Rashard Jones so much, man. That game would not have been close if he was in that game. And I know you could say that about every other team in the foot in the in the NFL. I understand that, but Rashard Jones is the best safety in the league. And when you lose the best at something, it really hurts, and it really hurt that game. Because we basically used him last year. We basically used him as an extra linebacker because he was the only one who could stop the run. So, um, yeah, that was tough to watch. Uh, Lashawn McCoy pointing at a defender and then going to the end zone. I'm not even going to talk about any of that stuff. But you know, he was ripping us up, and you know, Shady's a fun player to watch. And I loved watching him in the Eagles, but now that he's a Bill, I can't stand him, obviously, for obvious reasons. But uh, he had a great game. Mike Gillisley, we should have never have let go. I don't. This is what I'm talking about, past regimes. How do you let somebody who plays like that go? He had 90-something yards on us. He played amazing. Um, he's got great vision, and he's got great speed. I don't know how the balls we let him go, but um, he would have been a great. Obviously, we have D-Will now, so it is, but it would have been a pretty awesome but we, we do have a three-headed monster now with Kenyon and Dio but you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about but we and then Charles Clay straight raped us and it's whole it's so hard to see him play in a Bills uniform big play Clay uh he just straight raped us man he had like uh, he two he had two touchdowns one was obviously uh fourth and goal which we're gonna get to right now first of all we get to do fourth and goal and at this point you're like the seed this is it this is it this is crapping it right here. Uh, Tyron takes the snap. And by the way, Neville Hewitt, hats off to you. Because he, he came in and, and, like I said, we talked about it before. We're really going to show. And I knew I knew going into that game we were going to struggle against the crapping uh, tri triple option, speed option crap they run with Tyron Taylor. And I know it's a part of their I understand. But I knew, I knew we were going to struggle with that. And we did mightily in that game. But... Neville Hugh had a couple huge plays on that drive. We stop uh, the uh, the option plays, and I think that was Neville Hugh on that on that first. But anyway, we'll hold him to a fourth and goal. Uh, this is obviously season on the line. Vance calls the perfect coverage. Okay, I cannot remember who's guarding Charles Clay, but Spencer Pacinger, I know for a fact, was supposed to have the underneath coverage. He was not deep enough. This first of all, this is a perfect. This was, I, and this is just bad execution. Spencer was not deep enough. It seemed like he could just stick out his arm and like deflect it, but he either he's not wasn't paying attention or I don't know what the heck was happening. But this is why we need an athletic linebacker for God's sakes. He was not deep enough in his zone. If if that and and then he was just basically looking at the throw when it was thrown. He wasn't even trying to deflect it. Uh, and be, I mean I get you know what hats off to Tyrod Taylor for actually I mean. That was a great throw, but that was perfect coverage. All you gotta do is deflect that thing, man. You, you, that's your job. Uh, and that was terrible execution by our players, man. Uh, yeah, and it obviously, and I don't, I know, I'm, I know somebody's gonna say if I don't say it, and I, you know, I hate when I forget things that are important uh, that happened in the game. Xavier Howard did struggle this game, and not all of his fault. The only touchdown, the touchdown he led up to Sammy Watkins. Obviously, they did like they flooded the zone. Uh, it's not all his fault. There was a little miscommunication. If you watch the the snap or uh, or the line of scrimmage before the uh, snap, you can see that he's trying to tell them like, hey, uh, you know, either he was asking for help. I don't know, but I don't know if it was a cover two. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I know it was a zone of some sort, but um, yeah, yeah. So he got burned. With Sam, obviously, Sam is probably one of the fastest uh, top. Eight top five, top seven fastest receiver in the league. So he burned Xavier, uh, and uh, 
you know, obviously Tyrod Taylor throws the touchdown. So that that was it. I mean, and you know what? Xavier had some good plays. And he had some bad plays. But that's not all on Xavier. And I and he had a bad game. I'm not gonna. I'm not. You know. I'm not like. Oh, I, I don't want to say it. But yeah, he had a bad game. But that doesn't take away from the crap in the year he's had. Even though it's been very few. Like obviously he's played very few games. But anyway, so let's get. So Avi, dude, we need to address the linebacker in the safety situation. Not not all of it. Some of it's health and some of it's crap and talent. We need a third. We need a three-down linebacker so bad, who can who's an all-around linebacker. But anyway, um, where where was I going with this? Okay, yeah. So in overtime, it was like a third and three. I'm sure it was third and four, third and three, third and five, maybe. Sue with them big old hands, a big old burly Sue, just deflects the pass. That was a beautiful play by Sue. Drop back in coverage, getting in the passing lane. Uh, beautiful play by Sue. But in closing, man. I cannot wait for Sunday. It's going to be awesome. We're going to get to the Patriots. Obviously, and we have the comfort, guys, that we don't have to worry about winning this game. We can just sit back, relax, and watch, which is so gratifying as a fan. Uh, I can't believe it. Uh, I'm sure this was... I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. I cannot wait for Sunday. Hopefully... And tell me, you know what? Uh, hope, hopefully some of you guys are going to the game uh, on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, so I can't wait for Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I sure as balls did. I can tell you that right now. And then, uh, so, uh, I am Skyxer Channel 3, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one.